as has become sort of an odd tradition, um, something that I really like to do, uh, I try to assemble a few thoughts before each functionally literate event. And um, uh, my thoughts this uh, afternoon are actually on the uh, subject of the importance of literature uh, to people. And um, so I'll, I'll just share my thoughts with you. As a modern people uh, with technology constantly at our disposal, despite our predisposition toward reading and the universal communication, that form of writing that we all do so constantly, there is still a question to be asked, and that is, why read? Those with a sense of irony will appreciate the oddness of that question, given the amount that we must necessarily spend each day reading. Um, with text and email communication. Perhaps a better question to ask then, given that ironic thought, is why spend more time reading? Why, in other words, read fiction or poetry? Why, indeed, should we give our time to recreational reading? Why bury our noses in a book or attend literary readings such as this one? Uh, Keith Oatley, in his article, The Psychology of Fiction, which was published in Psychology Today, creates a compelling emotional argument for the consumption of fiction, noting that in it we can experience a kind of simulation that enables us to enter social contexts that otherwise we would never know. Fiction, he argues, is a proving ground for ideas, an open realm of experimentation, where we can toy with personal possibilities and new forms of psychic clothing, new configurations of ourselves. Neuro neurologically, Good creative writing has demonstrated and measured effect on our brain chemistry. Annie Murphy Paul writes about this matter for the New York Times in an article called The Neuroscience of Your Brain on Fiction. She quantifies the power of clever usage scientifically, noting that metaphors like the singer had a velvet voice and he had leathery hands roused the sensory cortex in the brains of observed subjects while phrases matched for meaning like the singer had a pleasing voice and he had strong hands did not. This phenomena suggests that the feelings that fiction and poetry stimulate in humans are as real and potent as tangible physical experiences which is an inspiring notion considering the unprecedented access that modern readers have to fiction and poetry right now. Jonathan Gottschall has noted perhaps most relevantly uh, that the idea, uh, regarding the idea of voluntarily losing oneself in good writing, he says in an article called Why Fiction is Good for You in the Boston Globe that the cumulative effect of exposure to fiction is roundly positive. Fiction, he says, enhances our ability to understand other people. It promotes a deep morality that cuts across religious and political creeds. More peculiar, peculiar, peculiarly, excuse me, uh, fiction's happy endings seem to warp our sense of reality. They make us believe in a lie that the world is more just than it actually is. Believing that lie has important effects for society and may even help explain why humans tell stories in the first place. And so, with these matters confirmed in our minds by experts, I'm happy to present three wonderful writers of fiction and poetry who are going to share with you tonight a unique opportunity for emotional, physical, and philosophical extension.